Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to work through the question that I raised in class about what happens when we take an A4 piece of paper, like this one here, and we bend it into two different cylinders. So I could hold it in this landscape orientation, and I could bend it around to form a cylinder, like this. So you see that we have an open cylinder here. Um, alternatively, we could uh, rotate the paper and hold it in this portrait mode and then bend it around to form a relatively tall and thin cylinder like this one here. And the question that I posed in class is whether the fact that this is the same piece of paper means that both of those two cylinders must have the same volume because they're both being created from a piece of paper with the same dimensions. So that, that was the question that we want to think about. Um, what I'd like you to do, if you haven't already, is take some time to work through how you might answer that question. I'll give you an opportunity to pause the video. And then once you've had a chance to do that, I'll come back and work through how I would think about it. Okay, so here we have the question that I showed in class, which is that we're going to take an A4 piece of paper and use it to form a short and wide cylinder and then a tall and thin cylinder, just like I showed earlier. And the question we're thinking about is, which cylinder has the larger volume or are they the same? Because as I mentioned, if they're both being created from the same piece of paper, then perhaps the volume is the same. Now the note I gave in class is that the dimensions of an A4 piece of paper that we'll use will be 29.7 centimeters by 21 centimeters. And then I also gave the hint that if you need to find the radius of a circle, perhaps you'll be able to use the formula for circumference where circumference is equal to two times pi times the radius. And we'll see how that will come in handy quite soon. So what I'll do is I'll start by thinking about the short and wide cylinder. And that's the one that was generated by having the A4 piece of paper in landscape orientation. So what I might do is I'll just draw a landscape rectangle just to represent the A4 piece of paper. And what we did is I folded that in a way to then generate a relatively short and wide cylinder. And if we think about how we get from this piece of paper over to the cylinder, the, the width of the paper, so the, the, the length from, um, of the top and bottom of the piece of paper in, when it's in landscape mode, which we know is 29.7 centimeters, when I was wrapping the paper around, that is what then forms the circumference of the circles at the top and the bottom of the cylinder. So we know that that circumference will be equal to 29.7. Now in terms of the height of the cylinder, so how tall is the cylinder? Well that's going to match the height of the piece of paper because that did not um, change at all um, as, as I wrapped the piece of paper around on itself. So that 21 centimeter height becomes the 21 centimeter height of the cylinder. Now, if we think about um, the volume of a cylinder, so it follows the same approach as we do with prisms or cylinders. We think about the area of the cross section and then we multiply it by the height. Now, the area of a circle we know is pi times the radius squared. So if we then multiply that by the height, that's how we get our formula for volume of the cylinder. Now here we know the height is 21 centimeters, but what we don't know is the radius. But given we do know the circumference, we can use this relationship between circumference and radius to then work out the radius. So, um, if we know the circumference is 29.7, what we can conclude is that 29.7 must be equal to 2 times pi times the radius. And if I divide both sides by 2 pi, 
I'll get 29.7 over 2 pi is equal to the radius. And now we have all the ingredients we need to calculate this volume. So let's plug it all into the formula. We'll have the volume is equal to pi times the radius, which we just worked out was 29.7 over 2 pi. So that will all be squared. And then we'll multiply that by the height, which is 21. So let's plug that into the calculator and see what we get. So we're going to have pi times, uh, in brackets, I'll do 29.7 over 2 times pi. And then we'll come and close the brackets and square that. And then we'll multiply that by 21. And we get 1,470, oops, uh, 1,474.084329 and so on, cubic centimeters. And I specifically say cubic centimeters rather than centimeters cubed to remind myself that what these units really mean is that if I think about a cube that had dimensions of one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, what I'm really asking is how many of those cubes would fit into this cylinder. And the answer is 1,474.084329 and so on. That's how many of those cubes we could squeeze into that cylinder. So that's how we interpret what those units mean. So there we have the volume of the short and wide cylinder. What we need to do now is think about the volume of the tall and thin cylinder and see if we get the same number or if we get a different number. So for the tall and thin cylinder, I started with a um, A4 piece of paper in portrait mode. So what I'll do is I'll draw a rectangle in portrait mode and I folded that around on itself to end up with a relatively tall yet thin cylinder. And we can do the same thing that we did with the short and wide one. Um, we can think about uh, this distance here going across as being the same as the circumference of the resulting circles. And in this case, because we've rotated the um, A4 piece of paper around, this length here would be 21 centimetres. So the circumference now would be equal to 21. And then the height of the piece of paper, which then translates into the height of the resulting cylinder, uh, would be 29.7 centimetres. So that's 29.7 for our height. Now, just like we did before, we can say that um, if the circumference is 21, then we know that uh, 20, oh, we know that 21 is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of this circle. Dividing both sides by 2 pi, I will get 21 divided by 2 pi equals the radius. So now I have all the ingredients I need to plug that into the volume formula for a cylinder. So it's still pi times the radius squared times the height. We've just got a different radius and height now. So we'll have pi times, and in this case, we'll have 21 on 2 pi, all squared, multiplied by a height of 29.7. So let's go plug that into the calculator and see what we get. So we have um, pi times, in brackets, 21 over 2 times pi, and then I'll close the brackets and square, multiply by 29.7, and we get 1042.281849281849, and so on, cubic centimeters. Now, here we have the two volumes and they're clearly not the same. So the answer to the first part of the question, which cylinder has the larger volume or are they the same, 
Well, we know that they are not the same. So which had the larger volume? It was the short and wide cylinder because 1,474 is bigger than 1,042. So um, the larger volume was given with the short and wide cylinder. And if we think about the, um, the formula, volume equals pi r squared h, then perhaps you could actually logically deduce that that would have been the outcome because um, if we have r being bigger, which it is in the short and wide cylinder, the radius of that short and wide cylinder was 29.7 over 2 pi compared to 21 over 2 pi. So given the radius has gone up, it actually will increase the volume even more because the radius is being squared in, in this formula. So a bigger radius has double or, or to the power of two effect on the volume compared with the height, which if that goes up, it's not being squared. So it's just going up by whatever it goes up by. And so in this case, on these numbers, an increase in the radius is having a bigger impact than an increase in the height. Now that may not always be true. I think it could be the case that perhaps you could try and think of some dimensions where perhaps the height grows by more than um, the radius being squared. That, that could be possible. But definitely in this situation when we're dealing with an A4 piece of paper and we're keeping the dimensions the way an A4 piece of paper is, then definitely we end up with the short and wide cylinder being the one with the bigger volume. So that, I think that's a potentially interesting result. I mean, maybe somewhat unintuitive if you think, well, maybe the same piece of paper should give rise to the same volume. It doesn't. So um, there's potentially some interesting applications if you think about that. Say if, you're, if you've got a fixed amount of say metal or, or something that you want to create a container with, then perhaps if you want to maximize the volume of what you can store in that container, then you would want to go for a short and wide drum or cylinder as opposed to a tall and thin one. Another potential application to think about is whether this explains a trend you might have noticed with cans of drink where they seem to be getting taller and thinner as opposed to the regular height and width that you may be used to and you may wonder whether somebody has uh, cottoned on to this mathematics and thought well actually we can create a perception of more volume when actually there's less if we make our cans taller and thinner but that's potentially just my cynical view but uh, one may argue backed up by the math all right, well, there you have it. Uh, hopefully you found that question interesting and potentially even if it was a somewhat unintuitive result, hopefully now working through the math, it all makes sense to you. All right, tick boom.